Oli, the return of Oli. We got Coach Mitch teaching an Oli class at 5.30 on Thursdays due to popular demand. So I'm here to walk you through some of the uh, movements of the day in case you are not able to make it to class. Eventually, you're gonna need something like a PVC pipe, maybe a broomstick. Um, if you don't have either of those, but you have a resistance band from hardware, that can be used today as well. But we don't need that right off the bat. First, we're gonna do a warm up. So our warm up today is going to be three rounds of 20 hip flosses, which I'll show you in a moment, 10 glute bridges, and then 10 doorway rows. The doorway row is goofy, and I'm pretty sure Mitch made it up. So I'll let him explain that to you in a moment. We're gonna start with 20 of the old hip floss. I love a good hip floss. The idea here is we're just gonna try to get the, the hip sockets opened up, ready to go. So we're gonna kind of set you up something like this, depending on your flexibility, and you're just gonna let it fall to one side. To the other side, that would be two three, four, if you can, we're trying to touch that knee to the ground here and just sort of windshield wipe your way to 20. After that, you'll stay on the ground and hips up, squeeze your glutes. One, two, three, all the way to 10 reps. And then you'll do 10 doorway rows for three rounds. So with that, I'll throw you over to Mitch, and Mitch can explain the doorway row. Um, so you're gonna go on the lower end of the doorway frame. You're leaning back, and feet are inside, and rowing like so. When you do it, try and think, making sure your feet are in an L position, like an L sit, or you're doing a wall sit, and get your feet out in front of you so you have more of your weight shifted back here like this. All right, so for today, the first part of the workout, I'm calling it wad number one, is going to be two different movements and both of them have a tempo. The tempo is super slow because that's one of the ways we can challenge ourselves at home when we don't have a lot of weight to move. Uh, and the tempo is the same for both movements. Uh, that is three up, two at the top, three down, two at the bottom. So just remember when you're in motion, it's three, and when you're holding still, it's two, okay? So the first move is going to be a tempo snatch grip deadlift. This is basically doing the first and uh, what we would call maybe the second pull-ish of the snatch. So what you're gonna do is set yourself up with your snatch grip, wide grip here, I'll show you on an angle, and I'm gonna start at the bottom of my potential snatch here. So get your snatch stance set up, make sure you're covering the bar with your shoulders and your chest and your hips are lower than your shoulders. And then I'm gonna go up one, two, three. I talked to Mitch and he told me that when you're in this two count at the top, you wanna to make sure your shoulders are staying over the bar so that you're not behind the bar and you're not fully stood up. So one, two, three, hold at the top, one, two, and then three, two, one, hold at the bottom, one, two, one, two, three, hold at the top for two, one, two, three, hold at the bottom for two. We're gonna do that for 10 reps. Once you've done 10 reps, really nice and slow, we're going to rest for one minute. Then you move on to your second move of this workout, which is the tempo snatch grip SOTS press. This one's a little more complicated. So ideally, a snatch grip SOTS press is going to take that same grip, but it'll be on your back, and you're gonna be at the bottom of your squat, okay? This is a very, very tough position for most people. So holding here, this is the bottom of your rep, and we're gonna go up, one, two, three, squeeze, one, two, three, two, one, squeeze, one, two, one, two, three, squeeze, two, three, two, one, squeeze, two. Okay, again, that is a really, really tough thing for most people to do. So the scale is gonna be able to do it standing, but we're gonna add an overhead squat in there just so we get a little bit of squatting. 
So you're gonna keep the same tempo, and right in the middle, we're gonna add an overhead squat. So standing, I'm gonna go one, two, three, one, two, one overhead squat, three, two, one. Squeeze for two. One, two, three, one, two. Add the overhead squat, three, two, one, one, two at the bottom, okay? So you do that, you rest 60 seconds until you've done five sets of 10 and 10. Five sets of 10 and 10, resting one minute in between. That is workout number one for the day. All right, so now we're getting into our circuit at the end of class, which is three rounds. You're gonna do move A, rest 60 seconds. Move B, rest 60 seconds. Move C, rest 60 seconds. That's one round. You do three rounds of that. So our movements today are going to be eight of a tempo press. Now the RX for today would be a tempo strict handstand push-up for sets of eight. Clearly, that was written by a madman. So for everyone else, all we're really looking to do is bring the height of your hands up for a push-up in some way so that you can get an extra deep push-up going on. So sometimes when we land on the floor, it can be a little bit short. So that's why people use parallettes. Obviously not everybody has parallettes. If you have a pair of dumbbell handles, that'll help you go extra deep. Or what you can do, oh, what you can do is take your something like this. And all this is going to do, you might think like, okay, this is going to raise your upper body up so that makes it an easier push-up. But again, what we're really looking for is to get extra deep through the bottom of the push-up. The tempo here is going to be two down, two up, with no rest at either position. So you need to be in constant motion. So that would be one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, for eight reps. If you can do that at a strict handstand push-up, one, two, one, two, good for you. Otherwise, you can do this with any kind of press, okay? Then you're gonna rest 60 seconds. Then we're gonna do the mysterious back widows, which I'm positive Mitch made up. So again, I'm gonna throw you to him in a moment. The All right, these are back widows, so you lay flat. Your feet can be on the floor like this. I like to do it like this because I get better balance and better stability. But your elbows are here like this to the side and you're digging one, two, three, and then one, two, three on the way back down. So think driving those elbows through, squeeze, then come back down. Driving through, squeezing at the top, coming back down. I lied, keep your legs uh, flat. Don't have them bent. Then you're gonna rest 60 seconds, and then we're gonna do a 30 second walking plank. Ideally, this would be going laterally, but it's gonna depend on your space. So, I'm gonna go this direction. If I'm in a plank, all I'm looking to do is walk to the side for 30 seconds. But if you're also super cramped up for space, you can do this like a little step touch. So you can just go to the side, 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 no matter what, as long as you have about that much space, you can get this done for 30 seconds, okay? That is the end of workout number two. And finally, we're gonna get a nice long cool down in. So we're gonna spend two minutes in each of the following four positions. We're gonna do couch stretch, we're gonna do saddle, we're gonna do seated forward fold or pike, and then we're gonna finish it off with a lat wall stretch. So the couch stretch is conveniently best done on a couch. If you've got one near, you're gonna pop one foot up, and then you're gonna to try to sit tall and press those hips, tuck them underneath and forward. So the idea here is that the, the closer the angle is with your shin and your thigh, the more of a stretch you're gonna get on your quad. But if you let your upper body come forward, you're gonna release the stretch a lot. So you wanna to try to both close this angle and sit tall. I have brutally tight Quads, so this is a lot for me right here. Some people just plop right back. If that's you, good for you. If you need to 
kind of release the stretch and give yourself a little bit of a something to hold yourself up this way. If you're super tight, that could help as well. You might want some kind of a prop or a chair or something around. But you spend two minutes doing a calf stretch, two minutes doing saddle. If you are used to Mitch's classes, you're used to this one. Saddle is sitting in this position here and trying to lean back as far as you can. Again, if you have super tight quads or hip flexors, you might want something or someone behind you. Oh God. Oh yeah. For this stretch. Oh, and you can make that as comfortable as you want. The idea is to release all of this. Then we'll go into two minutes of pike or seated forward fold, which is everybody's favorite gym class, sit and reach. And then we will finish with a wall stretch for your lats. And that one, you're essentially gonna put your hands on any wall that you can find here, wide enough that you can get your chest to come through. And we're just gonna let the chest fall through and your head fall through to open up these muscles here in the lats. Spend two minutes of each of those positions. Should be a good, long session. So have fun, and we'll see you tomorrow.